and we are good to go. Let me unshare my screen. Let's dive into it tonight. Absolutely pumped, guys. I know last night for some of you brand new, if you're brand new to this conversation about multiple streams of income, then yeah, last night would have been a trip. So tonight, just to, I want to really, really briefly recap just some of the things that we got into. Um, you know, one of those things really that we launched off is this conversation around multiple streams of income. Uh, and really Robert Kiyosaki is one of the guys that really did an incredible job of describing that in Cashflow Quadrant, his book. So to give you that visual again, if you don't remember it, this is what we looked at. We looked at, you know, this idea of the global population being split 95. I heard it said quite a funny way, a picture 95 squirrels fighting over five nuts. <laughs> and on the other side of the equation, you've got five squirrels who are probably, well, you know, I don't know if they're fighting, but they might be. They're probably not just chilling out, but they, they've got a lot of nuts. <laughs> and, um, and just that idea of what is it, the conversation we're having this evening is what does it look like to cross over from the left side of the quadrant to the other? So on the left side of the quadrant, we're employees and self-employed, you know, 60%, 35% split usually. And I think I talked about, you know, self-employed are usually the employed perfectionists who want to do it themselves. They're hungry for freedom. And the best vehicle usually is to go out on your own. I did this as a sparky for a season. It was great when I could, you know, choose to surf some days and, and not others and, and whatever. But then at the same time, it came with a heck of a lot of paperwork, all that kind of headache. And obviously, as you start to grow and scale, you deal with staff and all that kind of fun. And I'm sure we've got some business owners in the chat this evening as well. But um, just that idea, guys, of becoming an, the, an entrepreneur, becoming an investor, that mindset that comes with actually crossing over. I highly encourage you guys get this book, Cashflow Quadrant, uh, either physical copy or grab it on Audible. It's fascinating because um, Robert Kiyosaki goes into detail about what it is to become an investor, the mindset that it becomes and the different levels of an investor too. Uh, really, really fascinating book. So I want to unshare my screen, bring it back there. So yeah, that's where we started last night talking about what does it take to get from one side of the quadrant to the other. And really, it starts right here with this type of conversation, just starting to explore what it looks like to start getting our money to work for us. And Mike did an outstanding job last night guiding us through, you know, what it looks like in the stock market over, you know, 80 years on average, things like that. And then what it can look like compounding in that space versus also starting the conversation around compounding with trading. So guys, before we get into that, I, I want to just drop a little bit of gold with you guys. And just something that I've learned over the years from people like Tony Robbins, Alex Morden, like we've got Alex coming on Wednesday. And uh, I got to have a jump on a on a fairly private mentorship Zoom with him and half a dozen other people um, earlier in the year. And it was insane. The day before we got on that Zoom, he was at an invite only event in the room with Tony Robbins. So, I mean, this guy really does run in different circles. But during that session with us, you know, we we're just asking him questions about, you know, what his journey has been like, how he's, you know, done what he's done, really. And he talked about how he went to a Bob Proctor event. He talked about it when he first met him. That, that's a whole other funny story. But he talked about going to a Bob Proctor Matrix event, which cost uh, 15 grand a ticket. It cost 25 grand if you want to bring a partner. And so he went there and he actively talks about looking for opportunities to invest in his education like that. And any successful person will tell you that. That first thing, the best investment you can make is investing in yourself and your education. And long before you try throw your money at the markets, because there's a mindset that has to go with it. Otherwise, you're going to throw your money in at the worst possible time and it's not going to work out. So anyway, at that event, that Matrix event, uh, Alex was in his early 20s at the time, possibly mid 20s, actually, by then. And he just he was sitting there and he had made his first million. Uh, he's got a book all about called Dorm Room to like Millionaire and whatever, I think by 25 or something. But he Bob asked him this question. He said to him, do you know how you made your million? And he said, yeah, I worked really, really hard. And Bob says, nope, plenty of people work really, really hard. That didn't get them a million. And he said, okay, uh, I had great parents. And he said, nope, your parents, a lot of people have got great parents, but they don't have millions. And so he was kind of stuck. And then Bob said to him, here's your problem. You don't actually know how you made your million. Therefore, you can't duplicate it. You can't do it again. And you can't teach people how to do the same. And at that point, he's obviously pretty stumped. Um, but to go from that point of 1 million to now something like 70 something million, I think he broke the code and figured it out. And um, that's his event in Miami called Break the Code in January next year. But Bob basically looked at him and said, these are the three things that you did to actually make that million. And once you can define these, you can start to apply them and keep going. So he talked about these three things. I'm going to talk about them really briefly tonight. So state, story, and strategy. So number one, state. Bob said to him, you were able to get yourself, speaking to Alex, and this is you know for all of us, he was able to get himself into a peak state. And Tony Robbins talks a lot about this. Like when you think about your emotional well-being and the way that we might be on a spectrum between, say, highly depressed and highly joyful, um, what does it look like to be in a high energy peak state where you're prone to being the best version of yourself on a consistent basis? 
what does that look like? I remember years ago, I went on um, uh, quite a very intentional journey of self-development and grabbing personal profilers to figure out who I was and how I was wired and what was going on. Because in my early 20s, I think I may have mentioned this last night, at some point in there, I was really into the gym, bench pressing silly amounts of weight. And that really got to me. I, I ended up looking and sounding like a little bit of an arrogant little jerk. And thankfully I had a really good friend who one day out in the, behind the back line surfing just called me out and said, Ty, you need to stop talking like da, 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 da. And you just helped me see a perspective of myself that I wasn't aware of. And so that's how I define self-awareness is when your perception of how people experience you is the same as how people actually experience you. And when there's a difference between the two, I realized at that point in time, it freaked me out that people were actually experiencing me in a different way to how I thought they were. And so in the midst of that, you know, I went through a whole lot of personal development and, and went through a lot of profilers, learned a lot about myself, and I really actively invested a lot into coaching and, and that sort of world. But part of that, you start to learn who you are, how you're wired, how you function, and then you can start hacking it and get far better at managing yourself and living in that peak state really often and knowing how to get yourself into it. I know the quickest way to change your, your emotional mental state is just change your body, get up and move. If you're sitting on the couch feeling terrible, get up and just move. Whether it's go for a walk, get some fresh air, get some water. Some life coaches I've had training with talked about something like this, they would have people call them up. Uh, you know, and you can build a lot in coaching and you know, you can make a thousand bucks an hour sometimes, but this guy would call up and say, this is going on, this is going on, this is going on. And this coach was so brilliant. He just said to him, have you eaten some food today? Have you drank some water and you had some fresh air? If the answer to those questions is no, go outside, tick those boxes, call me back in three hours if the problem is the same size. And more often than not, they never call back. And so just some of these things that you can start to think about, like I know most of you guys, I'm, I'm pretty sure are high level people in the chat this evening, but just some of these things where you can start to think about the state that you're in and how you can really hack that. So state, state, living in a high peaks energy state. Number two, story. The story we tell ourselves about who we are, who we're becoming, how people perceive us, how people experience us, the the narrative that we think about ourselves, like honestly, what we think about ourselves is so insanely important, guys. Like Romans 12 verse 2 says, be transformed, like be transformed into the context in that word that I believe is metamorphosis. It's like a caterpillar to a butterfly. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when you start to really believe at a high level and start to really go after transforming the way you think about yourself and about the world and what's possible, you'll see yourself radically accelerate. So Bob was talking to Alex in that point and Alex didn't really know this, but he was speaking over himself all the time. I'm a millionaire by 25. I'm a millionaire by the time I'm 25 over and over and over again. Like that was something he wrote down every morning and night. And that then drove his focus to income producing activity or IPA, if you want to shorten it. And so we've got state, story, strategy, I'm going to wrap it up. And then Bob just said to him, you had a strategy. You had a very clear plan for how you were actually going to build your business and make your millions. And you stuck to that plan five days, six days a week and just ran the play. And so when you can start to really lock in those things, state, story, and strategy, you know, strategy, obviously, in the midst of what we're talking about this evening, investing and trading, you need a strategy. You can't just wing it in this space. You can't just go jump from one person on YouTube to another. You actually have to lock in with someone who's got success and then work that strategy in depth. You don't just bounce from one shiny thing to another every two to three months. It takes time to actually fully learn something, grasp it, test it, and then adjust it. You start trying to bolt things onto strategies in your early months, you're just going to go sideways or backwards, most likely not forwards. But anyway, I wanted to give you guys that this evening, state story and strategy, it's a little bit of mindset for where we're going. But this evening, we are privileged again to have the incredible Michael Jacobson with, with us all the way from Taupo. For those of you, um, if anyone missed last night, I'm seeing, I recognize a lot of names in the chat already from last night, but um, wow, we got a whole lot of gold last night. I know we're going to get a whole lot more tonight. So guys, this man, like, like I said last night, you know, he's been in the market for 20 years and he's seen it all. Like, I mean, back then he had to fly all the way to Boston to set up a trading account and they didn't have demo accounts, or at least he wasn't aware of demo accounts. So he went all the way over there to open up a, dem a proper account, funded it, and, and then did a wonderful job of losing plenty in the midst of not having a strategy. And so we get to learn from that this evening. We get to learn from his legacy and his experience. And I seriously don't take it lightly. Every time I get to listen to this man teach, I have gotten notes. So hold out those pens if you are good to go for taking notes note takers are money makers so i want to encourage you to take notes this evening be aware of what's going on get the recording later and go over it again and mike where are you my friend let me pin you to the screen and let's get ready to rumble this evening there we go man so good to have you with us thanks so much hey, for your time uh man i'll let you take it away let's go awesome man hey so good to be here tonight and so great to have so many people here with us it's really amazing for us just to share what we do and um yeah we just hope that you guys get some incredible value from what we share and it 
It really gives you a strong foundation if you're starting this journey and it equips you with tools um, for the rest of the journey. But, you know, we shared a lot about initially how to invest last night and there's so much that can be, that can be said about investing. There's so many different avenues you can take. Um, the journey of learning never stops with investing. Um, you take the first step, you find a strategy, you put your risk in the market or you put your capital in the market, it starts working. And then it's a case of constantly learning. How can I do this better? How can I protect my capital more? So the learning never, 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 never stops, which is really cool because learning means we're growing. So there's so much that we could look at in investing. There's, you know, there's investing in stocks. There's investing in, in the stock market. There's investing in commodities. We can invest in real estate. And we want to focus on ways that are extremely simple where you don't need a lot of capital to get into the market. And for that, um, we look at trading because it allows us to tap into the largest market in the world whenever we like. In the middle of the night, um, when we're in the bathroom, on the bus, we can tap into the market on our phone or on our laptop, learn to recognize patterns, learn to recognize trends, and look, look to buy things that are cheap and look for the to value to increase. So we're going to focus on trading tonight. We're going to look at some practical skills and tools that you can use. Um, we covered a lot of them last night. Some of the simple ones were, you know, it seems too simple to stay low, sell high. It seems like a no-brainer, but unfortunately, because, well, not unfortunately, but humans are emotional beings and we tend to follow the crowd. We tend to follow what everyone else is doing because we think other people are more intelligent than us. But in order to take control and be independent in your own finances, you need to learn to think for yourself. That's taking ownership of your own education to understand how the game is being played. And if you don't play by the rules that the larger players are playing by, then you probably won't win. And so tonight we're going to look at some of these ways that are very, very simple. Um, but it's learning to recognize value. And it's learning to identify where is their value? Where is there something that is incredibly cheap that I believe has intrinsic value and it's going to go up? Or remember we talked about last night with trading, if the market's crashing, we can actually sell at the top and buy it back when it goes down. So if you're an investor, like Ty said, last year, the market went up 50%. This year, it crashed 40%. So all of your gains last from last year you were holding for 12 months, it's all wiped out this year, it's gone, you're back to zero. But with trading, we learn to lock in profit every day or every week, and those gains compound on themselves. Now, the first thing I want to look at tonight is I want to bust a few myths because there's a lot of people who have a lot of different concepts about trading. Um, and trading is something that has a lot of bad stereotypes. Um, but I want to just share the right screen, which is, where is it? This one here. Screen two, and then we will go up here. Okay, so the first thing is that trading is equal to gambling. Okay, this is absolutely not true. Um, but it is if, you were like me when I started and you didn't have a strategy. You just put your money in the market and you bought and you just expected things to, to change or you thought, hey, I think this is going to go up. I'll buy it. That's gambling. If you don't have a risk management strategy, if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't have an education, if you don't have a mentor, you are gambling. So it is gambling if you approach it the wrong way. But if you're someone who is serious about making money in the long term, with a consistent approach, then absolutely trading is not gambling. It's a scientific approach that is based upon historical price. It's looking at chart patterns. It's identifying trends. It's, it's identifying value. Um, and therefore it's actually based on solid facts and probabilities that this specific thing that I'm looking to invest in is going to increase in value over a certain period of time. Okay, so you can make it gambling, but I absolutely recommend you not to <laughs> because um, you will still be there 10 years later thinking, what am I doing wrong? Well, you know, you should have got an education, you should have got a mentor, you should have got a strategy that works. 
and you should have learned to understand risk and then you can avoid all of that pain and all of that loss. I did not do that. And I lost thousands and thousands and thousands. So I was gambling for a long time. I wanted to succeed, but I was gambling. The second thing is you need a lot of money to start. We covered this last night. If you are investing with a traditional approach, you need a lot of money or you need a small amount of money and a long amount of time. Remember, we talked about traditional investing where the power of compound interesting only works powerfully when you hold or when you invest a small amount over a long sustained period of time, like 30 plus years. That's when compound interest starts to go exponential. That's where the gains start to go exponential. However, with trading, we realized you can start with a small amount via via $100, $1,000, and that can turn into a lot of money within five years if you are taking out money consistently. And as traders, it is not hard to take between 2 and 5% a week. That is easy for a good trader to do. And when you compound that over 52 weeks a year and over five years, a little bit of money turns into a lot of money. So we looked at that last night. That myth, absolutely not true. What goes down will eventually go up. That's not true as well. We've seen a number of, of stocks and assets that have crashed to zero. Even this last year, there was a cryptocurrency that went from, um, I think it was $100, it went to zero in about four days. And that, that did not survive. <laughs> okay, so um, that's why we never buy high. Because a lot of people buy high when they follow the crowd and they think, hey, I think this will come back to my entry point. I think it will go up. But prices can go down a lot further than you ever believed. So that's absolutely not true. A stock that has gone up is going to come down. Um, well, that's not true as well, because if we look at the stock market, and I'll share my screen later, the stock market has continued to go up for decades and decades and decades and decades and decades. And sure, it, it's had a few down blips along the way, but overall, it has continued to rise because it's based on the, the, the strength of the businesses within the economy. So for example, if you look at the United States, strongest economy in the world um, for the last 60 years, since the Second World War, constantly growing, all the money from all the world is invested in the United States, strong companies, and therefore everyone wants to invest their money in that stock market because that's where the value is. That's where the resources are. And so the stock market has continued to go up for a long time. Um, next one, knowing a little is better than not knowing anything. That is absolutely a disaster to even contemplate that, okay? Because what happens, in fact, I think, I can't remember who it was. There was a famous investor who says, um, knowing a little, I think it was, it was Grant Cardone. He said, knowing a little is absolutely worse than not knowing anything at all. Because if you know a little bit, and you think you know a little bit, it gives you confidence that you actually understand what you're talking about. And a lot of traders who start at, um, let's say they start in a market that is very, very strong. Um, for example, back in the 90s, the market was booming. Everyone was making millions simply because the entire market was in an uptrend. Everyone was buying. And so, you know, even a blind deaf monkey could have made money in the 90s bull market because everything was going up. All you had to do was click buy. But the people who made their money in that market, they thought that they had skill. When it came to the crash, most of them lost their money. Okay, they thought they knew something, but it was just a good market. And a lot of traders who start without an education, without a mentor, they get a little bit of success and they think, hey, I think I've got this. They learn a couple of tricks. Hey, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm doing. And I've seen a number of traders you know, approach trading with that attitude get wrecked within three months. So it's so important to begin the journey by getting a foundation uh, in knowledge and continuing to grow that knowledge base. <clears throat> and by doing that, you're getting a fully orbed perspective of all of the markets. So for example, um, the US dollar is the most key factor in the entire global economy. And so you learn that that affects everything. Then you understand that how the stocks move affect the price of currencies. So you can add that to your belt. Then you understand that there are certain economic factors like GDP and interest rates that affect your asset if it goes up or down. So you're slowly building your knowledge. So to have a little 
is absolutely detrimental. And that's why I encourage people to be lifelong learners and continue to add to their tool belt of knowledge. You can time the market. Okay, this is partly true, <clears throat> but it takes a lot of experience. Um, but you can learn to time the market on lower time frames. Um, higher time frames, it's a little bit harder. You can do it, um, but it does take experience. So that was sort of like a 50 50 one. More stocks equals to diversification. Now, with investing, you've probably heard it's best to diversify your risk. So, for example, okay, I'm going to buy gold, I'm going to buy 10 different stocks in 10 different industries. I'm going to buy crypto. I'm going to buy silver. And if I buy a diverse range of assets, then over time, I'm sure some will go bad, but hopefully more of them go good than go bad. But the more you diversify your portfolio, the more your portfolio will reflect the market return. Now, remember, the market return is on average between 8 and 12% a year. So the more investments you have, the more your portfolio will only revert back to the average of 10%. But if you listen to the greatest investors of all time, they have said, if you have a portfolio that you are holding for the long term, it's much better to invest between in, in, in between six to 12 assets that you have huge amount of confidence in their expected value in the future. Because if you... If you do all of your research, all of your analysis, and you're totally convinced in the long-term value of what you're investing in, why not put all of your money into that rather than throw $10,000 into this stock and say, hey, it looks good. It might go up. I'll just see what happens. It might go up. If you do all of your research and you come to an understanding that this investment has a very high degree of probability for being successful, just put your money in that. So it's much better to not diversify too widely, um, but to actually focus on things that you have a lot of confidence in and you have to have confidence in what you invest in. Remember when you approach the market, first thing you have to be aware of what you're risking. Before you enter every trade, how much am I willing to lose if this goes wrong? Because nothing is 100% certain. It can go wrong. And so you have to be happy with losing that amount. For example, if I take a trade and if I'm wrong, I might lose $1,000. If I'm right, I'll make 5,000. I have to be happy to lose that $1,000. And for me, that might represent 1% of my total account size or might represent 0.5%. Everyone has a different risk, risk preference. And you have to be happy to lose that because you might lose it. But over time, you want to find a strategy that has a high probability, a high win rate. So you're not losing 50% of your investments. You're, you're winning, you know, maybe seven out of 10, eight out of 10. And with trades, it can be even higher than that. So more stocks does not always, um, is not always better. It's a man's world. Okay. You know, when we look at the movies, um, often it's, there's a guy there who's trading or investing, but we've actually discovered that women actually make some of the best traders in the world. So that's absolutely not true. Um, it's totally equal. Anyone can do it. And what we found is that women actually can be much more focused and much more disciplined in trading than men, which is fascinating. So women, absolutely, this is, this is a place for you as well. Day trading is easy. Well, um, it, it takes a long time to learn. Well, actually, it doesn't take a long time to learn. It takes a long time to master it. But you can learn it within a year and it gets easier as you do it, your confidence grows in the market, you, you, your discipline um, grows. And so you get better and better and absolutely gets easier. You learn to control your emotions, um, but it's not easy to begin with. There's a whole new language you have to learn. There's a new world you're living in. There's a new way you're seeing how the world operates and how money works. And so it's not easy, um, but it's worth it. So it gets easier for sure. And these days when I pull a trigger on a trade, um, I'm no longer, you know, cringing, thinking, oh, I, I hope it goes up. I hope it goes up. I can trade. I can buy or sell. And I can sit back and I'm very relaxed because I have a high degree of probability in what's going to happen. And that makes it <clears throat> a lot easier. So those are a couple of things that we need to bust before we look at investing. 
especially in trading, um, because we need to have our mindset correct when we approach trading. We have to um, develop a mindset that doesn't believe the lies and actually believe it's possible. So a couple of things we looked at last night, never follow the crowd. Learn to identify, learn to identify value by keeping it simple. And remember that the other players in the industry don't care about you. The brokers exist to take your money. They are there to take your money. And so we don't want to follow an education that is propagated by brokers or banks. We want to follow an education that is independent of those uh, institutions and that is unbiased in its approach to reading the market. And the reason why most traders fail is because the education they're learning from is propagated by the brokers. Isn't that crazy? And then the brokers are taking the other side of your trade. So trading is, is not a scam. Um, and unfortunately, there's, that's a stereotype that is there. You know, there's a lot of people selling stuff on YouTube saying, I made $10,000 today. You can make $50,000 in a week. That's actually possible. But the people who are propagating that stuff are probably just trying to get you to buy something from them. And for those of you who went here last night, you know, when I first heard about trading, my literous friend was making $5,000 a night. And I thought, wow, this is unbelievable. And, you know, there's been some days where I've made that sort of money. And I've learned that it was possible to do that. But because there's so many things on YouTube and there's so many different ads, you know, hyping it up, um, it, it's a put off to a lot of people. But absolutely, it's a valid career option or it's, an, a valid, it's a valid source of income. And I guess for people who are on this call tonight, everyone comes with a different why. For some of you, you might just want an additional stream of income. You just want an extra $200 a week. It's an extra source of income. Absolutely doable. For some of you, you might, you want, you might want a career change. For some of you, you might have built up savings of 100 grand. You're like, what do I do now? Okay. Well, this is a valid way to totally replace your, your salary. For some of you, you might just want to create to, to grow your wealth. And as we look at learning to compound by trading, it's an extremely valid way to grow your wealth. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the charts. We're going to learn to look at how to identify value. And we're going to look at a number of factors that we use to do that. And so I am just going to share my screen again and we'll put up something else. Put up our chart here. <clears throat> and I'll just share my screen again. In fact, let me just see if there's any questions here that I missed. Yes, so Andrew, there's a number of automated tools you can use. Um, we're going to look at some of these tonight. Um, you can, you know, a lot of people actually learn to trade. Um, in fact, I'm just going to put this on a different screen because it's going to be easier. A lot of people actually, over time, they use um, algorithms to trade with. So I'm just going to change this and bring this back down here. It's going to be a lot easier for me to, all right, and we're going to sc screen one. Okay. So last night we looked at a basic chart and we saw that this represents the price of an asset over any period of time. So this one here, put a one in the chat if you've heard of Netflix. If you've heard of Netflix, put a one in the chat, please. And if I don't see ones in the chats, um, congratulations. Massive congratulations, um, because you're not watching movies every night of the week. Okay, everyone knows what Netflix is. So did you know that any of, any of you who understand Netflix are probably paying a subscription to Netflix every month. So did you know that you can be an owner of Netflix? You can be a partial owner. So if you're subscribing to their product and you're using their product, if you believe it's a valid product, why wouldn't you invest in the company itself? And so this is what investing is. This is what trading is. So if we look at Netflix, this represents their price going all the way back can i move this thing down here yes i can going all the way back to 2013 and so has netflix been in a strong uptrend or a strong downtrend well after blockbuster 
it's exploded, right? So you can see that we've been in a massive uptrend from 2014. People have wanted to buy Netflix because it represented a brand new way to do home entertainment. So we see that there's a strong trend. We know that, okay, um, this started to take hold of the world around 2017. And notice what happened in 2017. We started to see the trajectory of price go straight up. Okay, so we know there is demand for this particular asset. Now, remember last night we talked about once we find a strong trend, we want to look for price correcting into that trend. Or in, in other words, if we want to buy something, we don't want to buy at retail price. We want to wait for a discount. Why buy at $100 when you can buy at $50? And so if we look at Netflix here, we can see the price pulled all the way up to $400. And we know now that Netflix, well, at the time, Netflix was taking over the world, taking the world by storm. Everyone was using it. No one was buying VHS anymore. No one was going to be using DVDs. This was so much easier. You didn't even know to need to go to the store. Then we get a reduction in price. Price goes down by 50%. Is that a valid buying opportunity? Well, if I said to you, like I did last night, here's a Ferrari. Its current, its, its retail price is 2 million, but you can have it for maybe 200 grand. Would you buy it? Absolutely. Because it's, an, it's a huge reduction on the intrinsic value of something. You know that in the future, that's still going to be worth $2 million. So if it's at a discount, why would you buy it? So sure enough, Netflix pulls back 50% into our averages and then pulls away again, another correction, and then continues its merry ride up another 300%. So one of the ways, as we looked last night, was learning to identify trends, looking for pullbacks into the averages, looking for discounts in price, and then looking for patterns. Now, you'll remember last night, we learned to identify patterns in the market. Patterns in the market indicate when price is being compressed by the buyers and sellers, because the price itself is simply a reflection of the psychology of the buyers and sellers. And so one of the most common patterns is that you get an explosion in demand, price goes up, and then you get a lot of people thinking, hmm, I think I need to buy this. And so price will go into a range for an extended period of time. And then when it breaks out of that range, we get the next explosion of the trend. And so we use things called trend lines. As you can see, we find two points where price has been rejected from. And once price breaks through, that pattern is invalidated. We get one more pullback and then it explodes again. Now, the same thing happens at the end here. Notice that price actually makes one last pattern. Now, notice that we have an anomaly here. Price goes through. That's okay. What you can see is that price is respected at the same level over and over and over. And what happens when price breaks and closes above that trend line? There's your close on that candle, and we get one last final up thrust, and then we get a collapse in price. So with Netflix, we see a number of things. We see a new technology, which represents something that could be incredibly valuable. We see a lot of demand. Millions of people around the world are using it. We can look at this chart, and if you look back here, you can say, that's definitely a strong trend. But remember like last night, once we see this, do we buy there? No. Number one rule of investing, never buy high. Always wait for a discount in price. Sure enough, why buy at 420 when you can buy at 240? Almost 50% reduction in price. So always wait for the discount. So we've got moving averages, price reverts to the mean, we have trend lines breaking. We have a pattern going on there. These are some of the basic forms of trading. And even um, we use these same tools in investing 
to learn when we should enter the market. And we use the same thing with trading and we can use it on any time frame. Now, another one we can look at is Amazon. Okay, so all of you know Amazon. Amazon has had some of the most significant gains um, in anything for a long time. If we go back here in 2006, the price of Amazon was 50 cents. As you can see, it peaked out at $187. So if we put um, a percentage increase on that, actually all the way back here, 50 cents, Oh, a little bit higher than that. Let's go back there. Somewhere around there. Um, it's a 67,000% return. If you held from 2006, 67,000%. But what if you were just a little bit late to the party? And let's say you started to see in 2016 that people were beginning to buy online. Okay. What, what if you bought then? Well, let's put our percentage increase in up to the high. Let's move this down. You still made 500%. So can you see the earlier you get in, the higher return you get? However, a 500% return is still significant money. So let's look at this chart of Amazon. Now, what you can see is that we have a strong uptrend, okay? Price is trading above its averages. And remember, if we have a strong trend, price will always revert to the mean. It's like that elastic band. You pull it away, let it go, it's going to slap back to you. It's going to revert back to equilibrium. And so when price pulls away and the buyers are buying, what happens when it snaps back? It's naps back into the averages these these different lines are different moving averages it pulls away it comes back into the averages it pulls away it comes back to the averages it pulls away comes back into the averages and on and on and on so if you looked at this chart and, and these these are not things that these are things that are available to every trader in the market that these are these are free market tools that anyone can use what if you simply were able to identify a strong trend and buy every time price was discounted into the averages? You buy, you buy, you buy. Pulls back again, discount in price, you buy. Pulls back again into the averages, you buy, you buy, you buy. Pulls back again into the averages, you buy. Whoops, you, you buy. And then there's a time where the market will break through the averages and the averages will cross over. And look what happens when that happens. The market begins to collapse. When the averages cross over, the market begins to sell off. Now, that's another in, uh, in, uh, example of a strong trend. But let's go a bit further and let's put our patterns on. <clears throat> what do we see there? we see that price struggles to break above this resistance level. But what happens when it finally breaks above? The buyers step back into the market. We can use the same thing when the market is collapsing. We can use a trend line as we looked last night to put a floor in the market. Look at this. Price was respected here, here, here. What happens when the market closes through that level? We begin to sell off. And it looks like Amazon is going to be selling off for a long time. The moving averages have crossed over. The, the current uptrend has ended for now. Okay, this is a weekly chart. But we don't need to invest on in a weekly chart. If we wanted to, we can go down and we can look and see what this is doing on a five minute basis. So you know how I said before, if you were able to buy back at 50 cents and sell at the top, you make 67,000%. Let's say, now this chart represents one week of Amazon's price action. Okay, now are we in a downtrend or an uptrend? If it's a downtrend, type D in the chat box. If it's an uptrend, type a U. D, 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 
down, down, down. Exactly. It's a downtrend. Okay. So do we, would we buy into the averages in a downtrend or would we sell? Put an S for sell, put a B for buy. Put an S, <clears throat> I'm going to buy there. Okay. Remember, if price, I'm going to S, B. Okay. Now, the beauty about trading, remember, if you're an investor, if you're buying, you are buying and holding for the long run. If the market goes down, you lose money. But if you're a trader, you can sell when the market goes down, the exact reverse of what investors are doing. So if the market is collapsing, we, are, we can do the reverse. Now, let's say I'm a trader. I look at Amazon. I say Amazon's going down. I can make money. What do I do? I quickly, I, I simply log into my broker account and I wait for price to move back into the averages and I click sell. This is very, very simplistic, sell. Do I currently own anything of Amazon? No, but it's a principle in trading called naked shorting or, or shorting the market. You can sell something that you haven't got. And when the market goes down, you can buy it back on the cheap and pocket the difference. Now, this is a difficult concept for a lot of people to understand, but when you trade, you can sell something you do not own. So if Amazon's going down, I can sell it here, move back into the averages. I can sell it here, back into the averages, sell it here. There are great sell opportunities. Now, what if I could sell it here and hold it? Well, let's put our risk reward on and see what sort of percentage we could make. The red box represents my risk. The green box represents my reward if I'm selling. Let's say I sold back on the 1st of November. I believe the market's going to go down. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to short the market. To where we are now, I've made 7.3 to 1. I've risked 1 to make 7. I've risked $100 to make 700. I've risked 1,000 to make 7,000. But let's say that we knew the market was going to go down a lot earlier. We were able to recognize that the sellers were stepping in. Uh, let's say the Amazon was in trouble. We decided to sell. Let's say I managed to sell right at the top, which you can do sometimes. To where we are today, you would have made 28 to 1 reward to risk. You're risking $1 to make $28. 28 to 1. So we are looking, like I said last night, as traders, we're looking for asymmetric reward to risk. As investors, we're looking for asymmetric reward to risk. We risk a little to make a lot. But as traders, we can sell even when the market's going down and make money. Now, I'm just going to share another quick PowerPoint, and we're going to look at a few more things before we continue. Now, Oh, no, we're not going to use that here. Okay, we can do that here. Actually, it doesn't really matter. Now we'll put it up here. Hang on, oh, no, we'll put it, let's bring this back. Move this. Move this. It's okay. Okay. So there are two different ways that you can you can invest. One is by technical analysis. Now, by that, we are looking at the charts. We're looking at patterns like I've just been showing you. So we're predicting future price based on charts and indicators. It's normally a short-term approach. We are trading. We're looking at the charts. We're looking to find a right time for entry and exit. And we are looking backwards in time to determine historical patterns and see them playing out again in the future. That's what we are looking at. And that's where your, your capital compounds much faster and much more than traditional investing. The other approach is fundamental analysis. Now, it's typically with a long time approach. We are looking at future prices based on past performance. So what we're doing, if we are approaching the, the investing space with a fundamental approach, we are looking at things like the financial statements of companies. 
okay? We are saying, okay, I'm looking at the revenue of Netflix, and I believe that based on the revenue over the past five years, based on their board, based on the contracts they have, I, I predict their price is going to be $10 in five years' time, and therefore you invest. So you're looking to find the intrinsic value. You're looking backwards and forwards, but you are typically not trading with leverage. Remember last night we introduced the concept of leverage. We are, we are not trading one for one. If you, if you invest, if you put $100 into your trading account, the broker will actually lend you $10,000 to trade with. So you can leverage a small amount of money and that's how you can make much more than someone who is investing um, with on a one-to-one -one basis. So the way that we are looking at the charts now is called technical analysis. We're looking at charts. We're looking backwards in time. And again, a couple of things I want to go over again. Never follow the crowd. Never listen to the news media. The brokers are not on your side. And what we want to do is we always want to trade with the dominant trend. We want to trade with momentum. We want to buy low and sell high, which is at a discount. We are aiming for asymmetric reward to risk. And we always want to determine our risk before entering a market. Okay, these are super, super important. If you simply take these four concepts and apply them to anything you want to buy, you will do better than most people in the market. Wait for the discount. Be patient. Wait for the discount. Risk a little to make a lot. And always identify your risk before you put your money in the market. Know exactly what you will lose if you're wrong and be very content to lose that if you're wrong. You have to be happy to lose because every so often you will lose. And what we're looking at now, before we go back to the charts, we're looking at the resistance and support of price. We're looking at trend lines. We're looking at patterns. And then I'm going to introduce the concept of indicators. Okay, so we can trade Amazon on a short-term chart or we can trade it on a long-term chart. <clears throat> Let's have a look at Facebook or Meta. This is a nine-year chart of Meta. <clears throat> and obviously, um, since 2013, Facebook became extremely popular. It's been one of the best um, stocks to trade and invest in for a long time. As you can see, it started... Well, it didn't start, but in 2012, it was valued $20. And to this year, it went up to almost $400. Again, if we look at the first, the first way of understanding value, is this a strong trend? Is there demand for the stock? Absolutely. We can clearly see that price is trading above its moving averages. It's in a dominant uptrend. Therefore, we are looking to buy this when it reverts to the mean. Now, from 2014, which is here, to 2018, which is here, this is a four, this, re, this represents four years of Facebook. Now, if you simply bought when price reverted to the mean, you would have bought there, 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 you would have bought some more there. You would have bought some more there, there. You would have bought some more in there. And you would have bought some more in here. Oops. You would have bought some more there. We had a nice discount there. And you would have bought some more there. And then if you wanted to, look when the moving averages cross over. You could have got out and you did extremely well. On the lowest position alone, let's put our percentage increase in from this first position up to where you would have sold out was 188% on that one investment. But if you traded this with leverage, instead of making 184%, it would have been a lot more because you're trading with leverage. You're not trading on the one-to-one -one for basis. So what we do as traders is we're trading with leverage. And if you're trading on 100 to 1 leverage, you would have made 100 times that 184% return. 
But whether you're an investor or whether you're trading, is this a valid strategy? Absolutely. Because you're waiting for the mean reversion. You're waiting for the discount. This is a four-year period. Remember, you can trade on the five-minute chart. And what happens? Then price goes. Let's just remove these lines. You can see that price goes into a range. Now, the markets will always only be doing one of three things. The markets will be going up, the markets will be going down, or the markets will be going sideways. If the markets are going up, you can identify that by the markets trading above the moving averages. If the market's going down, as Meta has been collapsing for the past um, 10 months, then you only want to be selling. You can see we're trading below the averages. This is a strong downtrend. So when's the market going sideways? The market's going sideways in here. Look, it's trapped sideways, 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 sideways. It finally breaks out and continues the trend. What happens? Pull back to the averages. There's your buy. And you keep going up. So same thing. We have patterns. Um, we have a number of patterns here as well. I'm going to point out the clearest one. Same pattern. Price is compressed. It fails to break the highs. Look at that. Pulls back into the averages. Smashes through that trend line. There's our entry on the close. And price continues on its merry way. Now, you can also use these in a downtrend. Because remember, a trend line if it's a strong trend, price will often hold that trend line. But when we get a break of that trend line, price will often fall away. So we look, we can identify the strong trend above the averages. What happens? It respects it there, but then it breaks through it and price just falls off a cliff. Now, something else that we then use. So once again, just to quickly go over it, we are looking at the best way to trade is buying low, which is by buying at a discount, whether you're trading or investing. Um, trading back into the averages, that's how you're identifying an uptrend or a downtrend. Looking for breaks of patterns for an entry. But then what we can do is we can overlay other indicators. Now, these indicators are freely available to the market. Anyone can use them. Um, there is thousands of different indicators you can use. The moving averages I have here are one of them. But we have other indicators that indicate if a price, if, if an asset is overbought or oversold, which means too much has been bought, there's probably going to be a bit of a pullback. There's going to be some profit taking. And so one of these we have, I'm going to pull this up, um, is called a, a, a relative strength index. This tells us when the market is oversold or overbought. And the typical rule of thumb for using this, I'm just going to minimize this other one, is that when price moves below the lower boundary in an uptrend, it is oversold, and that's a great place to buy. Now, this price of Meta, again, goes back to 2015. So every time price moves below this lower dotted line, which is valued at 30, it's a buying opportunity. Was that a buying opportunity? Absolutely. You bought the low for the past three years. We then had another one in 2020. This one here, we would not have bought because we are now in a downtrend. We're trading below the moving averages. So in an uptrend, you buy when the relative strength index crosses below the lowest threshold of 30 and pushes up again. So if you simply invested in Facebook on a weekly chart when that happened, notice that you bought both the lowest points of Facebook in the last three years. Let's go and see if this works for Netflix. Does the same thing apply? Let's put our RSI on. Now, there's a number of different indicators you can use. These are very, very well-known indicators, very, very simplistic in their form. But I'm helping you understand that when you study how price moves, 
patterns, the same patterns reproduce themselves over and over and over and over and over uh, through price patterns. Once you learn to identify the trend, you want to trade the momentum of where the demand in that asset is. And we can use these indicators to get the timing of our trades. Okay, now this is Netflix. Going back to 2012, let's use the same RSI and let's have a look. Is price trading above the moving averages? Yes, there is a buy. Here, is it trading above the moving averages? Yes, there is a buy. Let's go forward. Is Here's another one, breaks below. Is price trading above the moving averages? Yes, it rejects the 100 moving average. It does not break below it. Again, here's another one. Notice that here, the averages still have not all crossed over. We're still in a strong uptrend. Another buying opportunity. So on Netflix, if you're investing, and this is what a lot of larger term investors do. They wait for an oversold position and they buy back in. So this is where you are buying four times on a weekly chart on Netflix. Did you buy the lowest points? Did you get the best discount on Netflix over the last seven years? Yeah, you got it four times. Let's see if the same thing works on Amazon on a weekly chart. Now you can go back and look at yourself. This is tradingview.com. This is a free charting um, website that is available for anyone. Now you can use this RSI on a five minute chart. And we, we're going to do that uh, briefly to show you um, what that looks like trading within a day period. Now, again, this way of timing the market, well, let's just remove some of these. This way of timing the market um, is used, is very, very simple and can be used by anyone. This is Amazon. Okay, let's go back and look at the RSI. When was the market oversold? Was it trading? Here we go. Was it trading above? Yes. Here, was it trading above? Yes. Okay, let's go forward. Then we had another one here. This is very, very simplistic, but notice every time we're buying here, we are buying at a discount. So on Amazon, we got the best possible place to buy in the last three years, four years, 2018. Okay, and then we have one last buy just in here. And then price went up. The averages, notice how the averages rolled over and closed. And then immediately we're beginning the downtrend. So we use these indicators, and I'll just briefly show another one. We use these indicators to add a degree or increasing degrees of probability to the success of our trade or investment. Because what you want to do is stack all the odds in your favor. Okay, is this a strong trend? Yes. Okay. Um, do we have a discount? Yes. Okay. Um, can we add um, increasing degrees of confluence to give us or to, to increase the probability of, this, of a successful outcome to our investment? So we use these indicators to do this. Another one that I love, um, let's just go back and look at, let's look at the stock market. So this is the American stock market. Um, let's remove these things. In fact, let's put, let's put the RSI on this and see if you could have been successful in trading this. All right, well, what about that? <clears throat> we had, back here, you bought the low, you then had the pandemic, notice the averages did not close above each other, there's your two buys, and you had a last buy at the beginning of the year, which was there, you managed to buy the two lost points of the market. One that I love to use is the MACD, and a very, very simple approach is, this is a formula that is a derivative of price. And so every time price, so every time this blue line breaks above the zero line, which is this horizontal line here, that's when you want to look for a buy. Breaks above, the trend continues. Breaks below, you're looking for a sell. Breaks above, you're looking for a buy. 
And then obviously the stock market has broken below here. Sure enough, that's where we had a sell in the market sells off. So when we're trading, we are trying to bring a number of different factors together to determine if this is, is if this is a successful trade or not. Now, on the stock market, we can go down to a five minute chart. And then what we can do is we can actually overlay, um, we can overlay our, one of our own models that we employ that actually tells us if this is a good opportunity to sell. So there's a number of things that we can see just here. Notice that price is broken below the zero line. You can see that's broken below zero. Notice that we're trading below the moving averages and we get a sell signal. This red arrow says, this is a sell. Now, what else can we put in there? Hmm, okay, well, remember we talked about trend lines. Price will respect the trend line. Price comes up here. Look what happens when it breaks that trend line. In fact, we can actually go lower than that. We can go back a lot further. We can go from this low to here, extrapolate that trend line out. Price breaks below the trend line. It then goes up and retests that trend line. Then it goes sideways and then it drops away. But we can go in even more. You can see that price, let's just zoom in here, price established a clear floor here for the past day. Look at this. This trend line held price in. What happened when that floor gave way? Bang. So you can see price was compressed, 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 compressed. It was unable to move higher. What we're doing is we're reading the price. It breaks below the moving averages. And then we get a sell signal typified by that red signal and the market pulls away. So we can trade this or invest in this off a weekly time frame, off a one minute time frame. And so that means that you don't have to be waiting years and years and years for an outcome like those weekly charts we were looking at. If I sold this here, I could have made three to 5% on that sell right there because with trading, we use leverage. We use money that it's, it's almost like the broker lends us money. It's a simplified way to say it. Um, and we sell what we haven't got. And then when the market goes down, we buy it back on the cheap and pocket the difference. So I'm gonna go, gonna go over that again. We are looking at patterns. We're looking at trends. We are looking at buying low and selling high. And here's a beautiful example of a trade that our team took the other night. Notice that price came down. It made this floor. This is called a triple bottom where price will reject or be supported three times. That means it's established a floor. It is unable to go lower. And then we have a trend line coming down like this. What's happening? Price is compressed. It's like a spring. All this energy is being wound up tighter and tighter and tighter. And by seeing that price is unable to go lower, this, there's no more sellers in the market. Okay, what we can see is that the sellers are trying to push it lower, but every time it's like they're bouncing their head against the wall. They can't get lower. What happens when the buyers step out of the market? Sorry, the sellers step out of the market. There's only one group of people left, the buyers. And once we break that trend line, the buyers step back in and the market screams to the upside. And so what we look, oh, screams to the upside, there we go. So what, we, what are we learning to do as traders? We are learning to find the correct entry, whether it's in a trend or a pattern, and we're looking for a buy and sell. Let's say price breaks out. I buy when that candle closes. There's my entry. My stop is below the low. So this is my risk. I'm risking this much and I'm believing for at least two to one on my position. 
So what I'm going to do is I am going to put an automatic stop order below this level. I already know that price is failing to break below this and it is unable to go lower. I believe the market's going to go up. So I buy and then I place an automatic order below this saying, if the market goes down, I'm wrong. You can close out my trade for a small loss. That's your risk management. I'm only going to lose $100. But if I'm right and I make two and a half to one, then I make $250. So being a trader is learning to identify the trend, the pattern, and then overlaying indicators on top of that to increase the probability of the, of the success of your trade, and then managing your risk. So you know exactly how much you're going to risk compared to how much um, your possible reward could be. And again, um, if you look at the market, you can see clearly we are doing one of three things. We are in a down. We are in a downtrend. We are in an uptrend, or we are in a range. And once you can determine those three things, and this is a very very simplistic way of understanding it. Once you can determine what the market is doing at each point in time, and you have a strategy for that then you can trade whenever you like. You can choose to trade in the morning before work. You can trade at night. You can trade in the middle of the night. You can trade during the day because the market's always open. So I trust that what I've shared tonight shows you that and helps you understand that it is not difficult to identify recurring patterns that repeat over and over again in the market. And these are some simple ways of understanding how price works. Again, just opening the 60-minute chart here. Do we have an uptrend or downtrend? Very easy to see. We have a downtrend. Okay. Is price going to revert to the mean? Yes. Is that discounting? Yes. Does it revert to the mean? Yes. 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 So you have opportunities to sell all the way down. Let's look at the other thing. Remember, we can use trend lines as well. Look back here when this floor breaks. Notice that price, I'm just going to zoom in. Notice that price hits this level three times. And remember I said, if it hits it three times, normally there's a buy. In this situation, we're in a strong downtrend. What happens when it breaks that floor? Boom. Once it breaks that, the downtrend continues. You hold your sell position exactly the same. It's exactly basically the opposite of buying in a strong market. So we're looking at patterns. We're looking at identifying the trend. We're trading momentum. We're learning to recognize the behavior of the buyers and sellers in the market. We're wanting to buy low and sell high. Um, and as a trader, we can overlay different indicators. And tomorrow night, we're going to have a uh, world-class trader uh, who's made millions trading. He, he teaches thousands of people around the world and he's going to actually be sharing his strategy that he uses and that he teaches uh, in the academy that we're collaborating with. Um, and he's going to show you step-by-step step exactly what that strategy looked like. So what I've shared with you tonight is the basic tools of learning to identify price, the most important things you should look out for. And what I'm actually going to do is just go over those again so we remember them. Um, <clears throat> again, never follow the crowd. Never listen to the news media. Brokers are not on your side. They are against you. Trade with the dominant trend. If it's up or down, if the market is in a downtrend, you want to sell. And we're going to be teaching you tomorrow night how to do that. Buy low, sell high if you're an investor. And the opposite if you're a trader in a downtrend, sell high and buy low. We always look for asymmetric rewards to risk. Always want to make more than two to one in our trades. Always identify your risk before you enter the market. You have to understand the risks before you, you invest your capital in any financial situation. And we've looked at resistance and support. We've looked at trends.
for tonight and give it back to you and you can share uh, the next part of the evening. Um, but in fact, before we do that, let me just jump on the chat and see what I've missed. Um, and I'm just gonna go through and see if we have any questions there. Um, <clears throat> okay, it looks like you've been answering the questions there. I'm just gonna have a brief run through. So dollar cost averaging, um, absolutely you can do that, um, Atta. With trading, we don't do that because we're wanting to be in and out of the market within a day. So we're, we're, we're buying and we can be out within 10 minutes or we can be out within an hour. Uh, we're looking for breaks of trend lines. Yep, we can use Fibonacci numbers. The moving averages, 20, 50, and 100, and 200, perfect numbers to use. And tomorrow night, um, the trader who's gonna be with us, he's actually be going to show us the averages he uses and exactly when we should be looking to buy and exactly when we should be looking to sell. All right, so I'm gonna leave it there tonight. Ty, I'll give it back to you and you can take us to where we're going next. Man, thank you so much. Guys, drop some love and appreciation in the chat. Absolute gold as always, man. So appreciate you and your time. And oh, I'm just, I was watching the way you mark up those charts and every single time. Well, all I can see now from everything else you've taught us is I see divergence everywhere, <laughs> which is another little, little sneaky thing that we'll, we'll get into with you guys another night. That's a little more advanced, but it allows you to spot when those things are turning around ahead of time. But man, Mike, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Guys, I am going to show you who we have tomorrow night so some of our team has experienced this legend before but tomorrow night we're going to be joined by mr jay bonham again who is based in canada uh it's going to be a late night for him this man has you know this is the incredible story jay knew nothing about trading three years ago he joined this platform that like, like mike said we're collaborating with came in as a customer and learned as a student like he just came in learned how to trade and he had a leadership gift on his life obviously he don't he no longer just he not only just learned how to trade, but he also then helped others onto the journey with him. He ended up running trading zooms in the morning, a lot like what we're doing. And he, to the, you know, he has some. He has at least four hundred people every morning logging into his zoom to trade with him. So it's something that a lot of our team are able to utilize, jumping on with him. So he's marking up the charts there for you know a couple of hours in the morning and showing us exactly what he's up to. But he did a session with us about a month ago, showing us his incredible strategy. Uh, called Kill Shot. So it's um it's brilliant. So we're gonna have a look at that tomorrow night. Jay's gonna jump on and do a special session with us to basically show us how it works, what it looks like, and um and and what that looks like more so to actually trade with on on the moment to moment. So like Mike said, it's like in in and out in ten minutes or an hour. I remember Mike you said something once. Um, you know, the longer your money's in the market, the greater the risk. And so the quicker you're able to actually get in and grab some gains and get out, the better. And so. Uh, another one of our educators that we follow, he, he describes it as smash and grab. Just get in, grab those gains and get out, uh, rather than just letting things sit there. So, so yeah, guys, same time tomorrow night, we are going to have Mr. Jay Bonham with us from Canada uh, to show us what his strategy looks like in detail, which are you know going to be some things that you're going to be able to take away and utilize. Um, and then don't forget, Wednesday night, we've got Alex Morton with us, which is going to be electric, guys. Someone that is just a very, very high level mindset coach and speaker who's who travels all around the world speaking, you know, 70 something plus countries uh, and has done very, very well for himself. The guy's been mentored by Bob Proctor for the last 12 years personally uh, until Bob passed away at the beginning of this year. So Wednesday night, 8.30, is we're gonna start a little bit later, but tomorrow night, 7.30, we're gonna be here with Jay. So thanks everybody for showing up again, another packed house this evening. So stoked that we were able to do that with you, Mike. Thanks for your time again. And let's close us out with a song and let you guys all get on with your evenings. Thanks again, everyone, for coming. And we'll see you tomorrow night.